Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to this edition of Living the Little Way. This afternoon, we're going to continue our interview with Joe Rutten. Last week, uh, he was with us and talked about his work with uh, people in work-related uh, circumstances, a business fraternity that he helped start here in Sioux Falls uh, that always focuses on the Christian aspects of work. This week, we're going to talk with Joe about his work at Mount Marty College, uh, working with students and with uh, leadership in the formation of the Benedictine Leadership Institute and how that reaches out and touches our lives. So it's my great pleasure to again welcome Joe back. When you look at your present position now with Mount Marty, you're also teaching in a role as professor of theology, but you're also forming another kind of group to uh, be leaders. What are you looking for in those leaders? Uh, a couple of things. Um, one, the same thing that I'm looking for from Main Street business leaders, that they understand what it means to be human, that they understand the tools of their mind and heart, and how those tools can be used to accomplish the work that God's given them. Second, is to give them a solid foundation that oftentimes current business leaders know they didn't have. And that is this foundation of faith principles like dignity, solidarity, subsidiarity, option for the poor, virtues, these principles that we're teaching the adults. They're all like, man, I wish I had these in college. Yeah. Guess what? That's what we're doing at Mount Marty. So we give them the foundation. The other thing is, is giving them a sense of meaning and purpose that they have been created for something unique and special that God has given to them. And it's their responsibility to spend their life discovering and living into that. Now, does this start with a class experience? Exactly. We actually have, with my institute, redesigned the general education curriculum at Mount Marty. So all of the general education curriculum and titles like your English class you have to take and all the stuff for two years, right? So instead of intro to philosophy and intro to theology, what we did was we rebooted them, Father, into Benedictine Leadership One for freshmen, Benedictine Leadership Two for sophomores, we still keep the same learning objectives of the intro to philosophy and intro to theology, but we've made them much more dynamic. So really, freshmen, it's the search for truth. So is this required of every yep, student? Every student. Does well, Catholic, non-Catholic, uh, business, nursing, doesn't matter what they're going to study. They all have to take these foundational courses of what does it mean to be a human person, uh, how to live in community, and really at the heart of it, it's the search for truth and the search for God. Now, we then take and integrate their disciplines. So if they get a nursing degree, their nursing degree will be integrated with these principles. Then, or business or criminal justice, or then as seniors, they have a one credit capstone that we introduced uh -huh. where they have to, you know, the Benedictine way is really the result of the rule of Benedict, this small document that's a guide for how to help people live well together. It's not a great spiritual treatise like Francis de Sales has or The Little Way, right? Like I remember one of my papers in college was on The Little Way. A one-page paper, I had a professor that only had assigned one-page papers. And I thought it was great because they're only one page. But then I realized a one-page paper is actually harder to write than a three-page paper because you really have to condense and like like know exactly what you're talking about, right? So I love St. Trez in our little way. She's one of my favorite saints. And so what we did was we said, let's take this document that's not like a spiritual way or a, a, it's a practical way of life to flourish. And let's have the students write their own. Ah. So all of our students, Father, complete a one credit capstone their senior year that is their rule of life. That's a very interesting. I'm telling it's also you. very challenging. Very challenging, but what we have found is once they get over the hump of figuring out exactly the cadence of this thing, 
they just run with it and that they begin to realize, wow, I've become somebody in four years. Here's where I was when I started. Here's where I am now. And here's who I desire to be. And then they build out their own table of contents that say, this is how I think I ought to live to become the person that God created me to be. Whenever you start a new program or make changes in an academic curricula, you always are going to run into the naysayers and <laughs> the people that say, no, we don't need that. Right. How did you overcome some of that? Maybe negativity is too strong a word, but um, some resistance to making those changes. Uh, this is a great question, Father. I'll be honest with you. Um, God's grace, I think, prepared Mount Marty University, prepared it. Like, when I got there, um, I made my first, the faculty senate, you know how academics works, right? They have to vote on the curriculum change. They approved the curriculum change. They hired me to come in to build out the new uh, framework. And then I came in and gave the, the first presentation of this is what I see and vision this framework being. And the dean that hired me thought like heads of lettuce were going to be coming, tomatoes, like here we go, the questions are coming, get ready. Get... I got done with the presentation and it was like, no questions. And I stopped and I thought, you know, I, I think that this could be for a number of reasons, but partly one, because this all makes sense. This is good stuff. Oh, we want our kids to be formed in uh, as virtuous young people? Oh yeah, that's, yep, yep. We want our kids to, to be formed as principled people that treat people with dignity? Oh yeah. Oh, we want our nursing students to have more than just the techniques of caring for people. We actually want them to like be able to understand the spiritual nature of the human being. Like maybe an integrated curriculum would be a great idea. So I just think that the faculty themselves were, they're, they're the type of person that sees that there's a relationship between subjects, that we're all in this together. And the goal is to like send out the door on graduation day at Mount Marty, the best human being possible, who not only is a good person, but is a good worker. And That's if you- That's kind of cool. Oh man, I got what the best job in the world. Mount Marty's got a lot of fun stuff going on. It's really been a privilege to be a part of it. And to be able to bring this vision of integrated uh, faith and work to Mount Marty, where you actually get a work and curriculum, and you get to be, you, I mean, that's a transformative place. But Father, I'll tell you, I'm impatient. And I was like, I can't wait to, to, to get these students out the door and then get them into the works facilities and then wait till they get into middle management where they can be effective leaders or senior management where they're actually making decisions. We need Main Street leaders need this now. And so Father, what we did was we started an extension office of the Benedictine Leadership Institute and we started doing executive leadership development out of Mount Marty University. So now we're running pres bank presidents and uh, the chief of police of Sioux Falls has been a, a graduate of a three-day executive leadership training uh, that the Benedictine Leadership Institute puts on at a Mount Marty University where we train them in principled and virtuous uh, uh, practices mm -hmm. and how it is that we can be professionals that impact the world, whether we're police officers, nurses, bankers, doesn't really matter what we are. We're all humans. If we live well and do well, then our work will be well. It has more to do with the, our identity as Christians. 100%. And less than what we do with our hands all the time. And what happens sometimes is in the lay world, the, the, the compartmentalization that exists in academics and in life really takes hold. Laity oftentimes struggle to see how work, what they do on Sunday impacts what they do on Monday and what they do on Monday impacts what they do on Sunday. And all I'm doing, we're doing is help integrate and create that place of conversation so that we can see not only that work is better and, and we have an opportunity to, to, to create more when we work, but we become more when we work. So it's a contribution on one hand and a reception on the other. 
I think your, your probably theological training would say you can't give what you don't have. It, I would say it's a reception first and a yeah. contribution second. But it has to be interactive, I think. Yeah. You know, that yeah. it, when you're receiving something, you have to have had some kind of prior fertilization of the ground to allow you to, to receive it. You know, here's an example. Just the other day in class, we were reading uh, uh, this text uh, on the Good Life Method. It's a textbook from um, Notre Dame. There's a great mm. course out there. It's really this f classical good life, a very Aristotelian good life. And in there, one of the quotes is by uh, the father of modern psychology. You have a psychology doctorate, right? Yep. Um, yep. William James. And William James... Who is also a great educator. Oh, really? Yep. Really? So I just was introduced to him. I don't know a ton about him, but I can't wait to find out more. So the, this, this chapter starts with a quote by William James, and then it begins to tell his experience about how he was depressed and suicidal ideations and struggled with perspective on life and it does it have meaning and purpose or is it just fate are we like just driven to fate and then we die and it's all over and he made a decision that he's going to give one year where he was going to choose to believe he was going to choose to have faith he was going to choose to see the positive and the good in the world and believe that life has freedom to choose your path and it, he becomes the great William James because of this one decision. And in that perspective, he makes an interesting comment about theism and about belief. And he says that it's paramount for religious believers that they have an encounter, yeah. an emotional, <clears throat> an emotional encounter with the spirituality or religious belief and not just an intellectual uh, belief system, that you need both intellectual and emotional experience. And I thought that makes perfect sense. So this whole place is what we're doing with the young people so that they just understand that there's just this magnificent life they've been created for, but it's not just an intellectual concept. They need to go out and they need to seek out the creator. They need to go have these spiritual encounters and so we thought, well, let's help, help them have these spiritual encounters. So we take all of our freshmen on a four-day leadership retreat to the Black Hills of South Dakota and all of our sophomores on a four-day leadership retreat to the Rocky Mountains of Colorado wow. to provide them with an opportunity to seek God in, in this beautiful context of nature and for them to kind of say, all right, what does this reality of my life look like? And who might God be creating me to be in the world? You know, it's, uh, it's refreshing to hear the movement of the Holy Spirit in all of this. And I'm so thankful for your work, Joe, and I'm thankful for you being with us today to explain to our parishioners and our viewers some of the great things that are happening because of Jesus Christ and how we are lifelong disciples Amen. that bring Christ to others. Missionary disciples, Father, I'm grateful for your priesthood. As a, uh, For 20 years now, uh, I've been around this, and you've been around it with me. We might have even been in seminary together at the same time. Uh, and it's just grateful to, to be able to be here with you, with your parishioners. Uh, one of my aunts is a long-term, well, founding member of St. Therese Parish. Yep. And uh, we're just so blessed for your ministry and your leadership here at the parish. So. And it was a sad day when, <laughs> when she died. <laughs> I used to love to go down and sit in Esther's kitchen and yeah. eat cookies. So Yeah, Esther Horton, she was an amazing human being. Um, I'm sure there's other amazing humans out there, but boy, she was one of a kind. She was, and she had the faith and was quite cognizant of it right until the moment she died. And, and I was blessed to have parents that had faith like she did. And uh, hopefully I can pass that on to my kids and whoever else it is that I get the opportunity to work with sure. at Mount Marty or the Faith and Business Fraternity. So Thank you so much, Joe, and thank you for your enthusiasm and love of God. I want to take this opportunity to encourage uh, any of you to investigate uh, the uh, Leadership Institute at Mount Marty University. And also, uh, if you're interested, to get involved with the Business Persons Fraternity.
Hey father, I got a question for you today. Can I attend a same-sex marriage? Wow, that's a really loaded question. As you all know, the Catholic Church recognizes marriage and understands marriage as a sacrament, an outward sign instituted by Christ to give us grace between a man and a woman. Uh, and it's a covenant between the two of them and Almighty God. A gay wedding, on the other hand, is a legal uh, reality. It's something that the state of South Dakota or whatever state you're in approves. Sometimes, despite what you believe, in order to preserve family unity, you need to perhaps attend the wedding but not have any substantial part to play in the ceremony itself. For example, being the best man or whatever uh, other action or role might be required. Preserving family unity is important. You don't want to chase people away. You still want to stand up for the truth, but you don't want to alienate people because they might come back someday and want to be reunited with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, you are the divine author of all work. Help us always to understand that work is part of our participation in your co-creation of the universe and our world, and that we embrace fully our responsibility to be united with you in the way that we approach that. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.